And of all these wedge policies, we are going to start with um, the minimum wedge, which is very simple policy to analyze with the model, and of course the policy that we see uh, in many, uh, many places. So the minimum wage, uh, just a quick word on the minimum wage in the US, uh, how does it work? So there is a minimum wage you know, in the US and there are which uh, people can, you know, people have to be paid at least that minimum. There is a federal minimum wage, so which applies everywhere in the US, um, which is around just a slightly above $7 uh, right now. As we um, discuss when we looked at wage functions, uh, the minimum wage, actually, the generosity of the federal minimum wage has been um, decreasing over time. In real terms, you know, the minimum wage was the most generous in the 70s and then uh, its generosity has been fading since then. Um, and, but on top of that federal minimum wage, there are also local minimum wage. So minimum wages that are imposed by um, US states or even US cities that are above the federal uh, level. So for instance, there is, you know, a push to try to bring the minimum wage to $15 and um, some cities, um, you know, have uh, implemented such a minimum wage. So for instance, cities on the West Coast um, have done that. Um, so that's, that's kind of how the minimum wage works um, with a federal baseline and then some local elements that can go uh, on top of it. So now the question um, is what's the effect of the minimum wage in a matching model. So, you know, in general, it's, it's, it's hard to address that question, um, you know, just because actually there are, very f there are fairly few workers that are on the minimum wage, you know, so uh, many workers are paid uh, more or much more than the minimum wage and they are not directly affected by minimum wage regulation. So here, just to, um, so if you wanted to really know like what the effect of the minimum wage would be, you would need to take into account the distribution of wages and you need to understand, you know, how many people are actually affected by the minimum wage, how the minimum wage spills over to other people who are not exactly at minimum wage but are paid, you know, slightly above it and so on and so forth. So that would require uh, actually, you know, thorough empirical numerical analysis to try to take into account all of this, um, all of that, if, if you really wanted to understand how the minimum wage affects the whole distribution of workers. So that's something that's um, quite complex. But here what I want to do um, today is um, much simpler than that. It's just to try to understand the economic forces that are at play, at play when we implement the minimum wage. So um, here, let's just assume to simplify that everybody is paid at the minimum wage. And let's just try to see what happens in the matching model to understand what are the forces at play. And then we can use this, um, you know, the reasoning that we develop to try to figure out what would happen in a, in a more complicated world with a distribution, you know, with a whole range of wages, like, like in the real world. So we're going to assume that all workers are paid at a minimum wage W. Um, and, uh, and so the question is, for instance, and let's say the government wants to increase the minimum wage, the question becomes what happens Uh, what happens when the minimum wage uh, goes up? Um, what do we expect will happen to, um, to the labor market? Um, so, you know, uh, how can we figure this out? Well, I think the, the easiest way is just to um, use our labor market diagram. Okay? And what we know is 
in our labor market diagram, <coughs> we have a labor supply, we have a labor demand, and we use them to um, figure out what is the equilibrium on the labor market. So here I should say, you know, we are going to go, you know, we, the models that we use, we've seen there is, uh, you know, there's a range of assumption we can make about, about wages, about the production function. So here we'll just use our, uh, we're just going to use our matching model with um, job rationing. You know, which is like the third generation of matching model, which provides the best description of the labor market, um, both business cycle fluctuation and also explains possible lack of job in the labor market. So what that means here is that in terms of production function, remember the two things you can, in this class of matching model, you can always select a production function either linear or concave, and you also need to make an assumption about the wage function. So here, uh, that's going to be easy. So here we assume that all workers are paid at the minimum wage. So when you write down your model and you want to specify the wage function, the wage function is just going to be that your wage is W, you know, the minimum wage. So that's very easy. It's a model in which we assume that the wage is just given by regulation. And then in terms of production function, We'll just use our standard concave production function. So output is going to be uh, technology times number of producers with alpha where alpha is less than one, and of course bigger than zero. Okay, so uh, typical matching model. So we'll have a labor supply, labor demand here in that case would be downward sloping. Uh, so, and what's going to happen when we change the minimum wage? Uh, so it's going to be pretty easy because the labor supply is not going to be affected by the minimum wage. And uh, but the labor demand will be.